Hello everybody. This week's Torah portion, Parashas Vigash, we find the reference to the importance of unity. The Torah writes that when the Jewish people, the sons of Yaakov, went down to Mitzrayim, it says they were nefesh, they were one soul. And Rashi points out that even though there were 70 people, because they had a common cause, they were like one soul. The truth is that unity, shalom, achdus, isn't simply a, a nice virtue, a nice value, it's actually the goal of human history and the goal of Judaism. What do I mean? See, in English, peace means the absence of conflict, the absence of war. But in, in Hebrew, shalom doesn't just mean peace. Shalom means wholeness and oneness. Why is that important? You see, the Torah teaches that every single human being, every single Jew, has in them a piece of God. A piece of God. And that piece of God in them yearns to connect to, to the other parts of God. It's kind of like this is an example brought in the Mesil Shacharim. Imagine a giant magnet with a small different magnets. So we each have a magnet inside of us. Those magnets desperately yearn to connect to the big magnet and connect to the other, other magnets. And to create one big magnet, one deep connection. We all have an existential yearning for relationships, for connection. Particularly the relationship with, with Hashem, with our Creator. Often we're not clear what that yearning is, but it's it, this, this yearning for, to connect to Hashem. That's why people say they have this yearning to connect to something that's bigger than themselves, what they really mean is that's the, this yearning to connect to Hashem, to our, to our Heavenly Father. So therefore, we have inside of us these, this urge, this compelling urge to connect to the other magnets and to connect to Hashem. That's what's called Shalom. Shalom is when all the disparate parts of Hashem, so to speak, are connected, united with, in one unit. And that's the goal of history, to create this oneness between all the Jewish people and ultimately all humanity and oneness with Hashem. That's when this existential yearning for connection becomes truly fulfilled. And that's really the goal of, of, of the Torah, to create the, this beautiful world in the future of true, true shalom, which is the true oneness, oneness between all, all the Jewish people, all humanity, and oneness with Hashem. Okay, that's very nice. And, and, and peace is certainly a wonderful ideal, but it's so difficult. The Jewish people are so fractured. We're scattered and fractured into all these different parts. And it's very nice to talk about achdus and unity, but how do we create it? The reason why it's so hard is for, for a metaphysical reason, because, because the Yitzhara, the negative impulse, knows that peace is the goal. Therefore, it creates all these metaphysical barriers that prevent peace. So therefore, we have to find another approach, another angle. What can we do to undermine the, the Yitzhara's metaphysical barriers, to separate those barriers so that all the magnets can connect? What are the metaphysical, Kabbalistical, Kabbalistic, and mystical approaches that we could do to create oneness and wholeness and shalom? So I want to share with you a beautiful idea. This will be a little longer than I usually speak, but it's so beautiful and so deep and so profound that I feel it's just, it has to be shared. <clears throat> the Jewish people have superpowers. What does that mean? Our sages teach that, that Hashem gave, Hashem endowed our ability to change the world, Hashem endowed us with an ability to change the world, not only with our actions, but even with simply our speech, and even with simply our thoughts. We have the power. Our actions, speech, and thoughts are connected to the roots of the universe that help to bring goodness and holiness and shefa and spiritual energy to the world that helps to perfect and, and, um, and sanctify the world. <clears throat> we find this by the three periods of three episodes in the desert that correspond to the three holidays. Pesach, our status teach, is, uh, uh, relates to the word Pesach, which means the mouth opens. Uh, with Pesach, we were endowed with this, the power of changing the world with our speech. That's why the culmination of Passover happens, happened at the sea when they sang the song of the sea, Az Yashir, because their, their, their mouth, their path, Jewish people had a mouth that was able to change the world. That was Passover, the period of Passover, living in Egypt. With, with Shavuos, the period of getting the Torah, that we got the Torah, we use our mind for that. We, we were down with the ability to change the world with, just with our thoughts, with our thinking of Torah, we could actually influence the world. That was the period of getting the Torah, corresponds to Shavuos. And then Sukkot, which corresponds to living in these huts, living in these huts of glory, basically living in the huts, huts of the clouds of glory, um, they sanctified our actions. Our mice and our actions were sanctified, and therefore even our very deeds were able to bring holiness to the whole world. So we have we, we can sanctify the world with our deeds, speech, and thought. Okay, therefore, 
also with peace. We have the ability to create peace with our deed, speech, and thought. So let's explore this. <clears throat> let's start with thought. thought. The word for nefesh, the word for nefesh, which means soul, is the same word also which means desire. As it says, emes is nafshecha, if you desire. So nefesh can mean both soul and desire. If the paradigm is 70, 70 people that are one nefesh, they basically also, if they have one common cause, one nefesh, one desire, they, they're in the category, in the, in the typology of one nefesh. So, right, we say in Shema, it says, we accept Hashem, Shema Yisrael, Hashem, 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 we say, we have Hashem, we love Hashem, the whole nefesh. We all accept that we will love Hashem with all of our, with our entire life, and with every single desire. It means we should be willing to give everything up for our love for Hashem. When we accept that, that, that I yearn to love Hashem with my whole nefesh, that's my whole desire, my whole nefesh, my whole desire is to love Hashem, is to have a relationship with Hashem, to be connected to Hashem. If we all together, if we all together proclaim and declare that's our desire, that every one of our desire is to love Hashem with all of our nefesh, all of our nefesh. That means we all have this, a common nefesh, a common desire. So, ha, so therefore, kabos ol machal shemayim, saying the shema, saying the shema, accepting with our minds that my yearning in life is to connect to the Almighty. We, and if we all accept that, that creates a common cause, which creates a common soul. That's one. That's one aspect. To create, we, if we, when we say when we say shema Yisrael, we actually we can be connecting the Jewish people. We have one nefesh, one desire. That's doing it with our mind. How to do it with our mouth. So we do it with Torah. It says, Torah says, nefesh, that Torah returns the nefesh. This can also be read as, this returns us to the category of one nefesh. That Torah has the power to bring us to one, to being, to bring us together, to unify us, to a state of one nefesh. How does this work? How, do, how, does, how does Torah unify us? How does Torah bring the Jewish people together? So, so the Sassamist offers three fascinating ideas why Torah unifies us and brings us together. Number one, he says, <clears throat> we find that in the primordial state of the world, there was one, there was one language. It's called Safa Achas. And I say to say that Safa Achas was what? Was Lashon Kodesh, the holy tongue. Now, eventually, the world became dispersed and became broken up into 70 different languages. But, but, um, but the original language, the holy tongue, had that energy of oneness, the energy of, of humanity being connected. So therefore, our sages teach that, that that power of oneness, the power of achtos, was embedded into Lashon Kodesh, and Lashon Kodesh was embedded into the Torah. Therefore, when we learn the Torah, that has this Lashon Kodesh, which has this primordial state of unity, we actually create a sense of unity. What a fascinating idea. So number one, the, the Holy Tongue itself, the, the words of the Torah itself had this, had this energy of oneness that brings us together. Number two, another fascinating idea is that our state of speech that every single Jew has a portion in the Torah that they have to reveal to the world. Every Jew has a certain idea, new nuance, new angle, new chidush that they have to reveal to the world. If I love Torah, I have to realize that I have to love every Jew because every Jew has something that they can contribute to reveal to the Torah. As, as it says, as it, as it says in... Um, as it says, we say in our prayers, Hashem, please help reveal my portion in Torah. And also it says, Hashem owes Hashem gives owes to his people. I say to say owes is a reference to Torah. Hashem, Hashem puts Torah in his people. Hashem and that, then Hashem blesses the Jewish people with peace. By putting the Torah into us, into us, we each have a chalik of Torah, a portion of Torah to reveal. And that once I recognize that, that we all of us are needed to be able to reveal their their, their angle, their unique contribution to the Torah, that will, that will help us realize we're all needed, and therefore that, bring, that leads to peace. So, so that's, number, that's number two. Number three, another fascinating idea why Torah leads to peace, is because our status teach that another name for God is Shalom, which means that, that part of Hashem's essence is peace. And our status also say that another name for Hashem is Torah, meaning that the Torah is Hashem's name. Whatever that means, the point is that Torah, Shalom, and Torah are all God's name, and therefore, they're all connected. And therefore, when I, when I learn Torah, I am drawing to myself the energy of Shalom and the energy of Hashem. And therefore, the Torah itself brings peace. <clears throat> so that's, that's Shalom. So, so that's, that's um, how our speech, our speech can, create, can create Shalom. So we have our thought and speech, and also with deeds. We find the Jewish people came together to build the Mishkan. They unified together. Everyone contributed their contribution to, bring, to create the Mishkan. 
And that brought down the Divine Presence. We find that we had a common cause to, to, to spread Kavod Shemayim, a, co a common activity that, that revealed God's presence in the world, that brought down, that created the, created the Shekhinah. They had a Knesset Yelashem Shemayim. So we have three examples of how we, we, can, we can truly create peace. Number one, if we have, if we, if our mind, we say we have a common cause, our, our goal is we each want to have a relationship with Hashem. And that's our, that's our goal in life. Everything is, is a means to develop in that relationship. And that's all of our goal. And if, if we simply just, just commit that, so that creates an energy that helps, helps inspire other Jews to be, be, um, become, become part of the Jewish people. And become identified with Klai Yisrael and become unified into Klai Yisrael. That's number one. Number two, to learn together. Learning Torah itself puts the energy of unity, but also, of course, to learn with the fellow Jews. Learning Torah itself has ability. Learn with a study partner. That is ability, this unique ability to create a kahila, create a sense of oneness. And of course, to come together with a common cause, a common activity, with a common focus. And what can we do to, 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 to bring more respect to, to holiness and Hashem in the world? We have a common activity that can also, of course, create unity. So, therefore, we, if we can use our thoughts, speech, and, and actions to create unity, we could truly perfect the world and humanity and bring us to the state of shalom, of oneness. Let's all absorb these powerful lessons. Let's have an amazing, beautiful, peaceful Shabbos.